everyone can make their own cosmetics because formulation is fun, it's easy and it's empowering. And while most people start in the kitchen, have you ever stopped to think where the global beauty industry, which is a half a trillion dollar global annual industry, makes its cosmetics? Well, they make them in factories and these factories are really hard to gain access to. But we've got an exclusive for you today because we're here at Mayfield Labs in the southwest of the UK and we're going to give you a tour inside the factory to show you how cosmetics are made. Welcome to Mayfield. Welcome to Mayfield Labs. We're going to get an exclusive tour inside the factory and go and see what it's like to make a cosmetic. And today I'm joined by Lucy Poole, who's the general manager at Mayfield. Hi Lucy, how are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm good, thank you. We're going to have a lot of fun. Come with us. So step number one, as always, is to first of all, sanitize your hands because we need to respect good manufacturing practice as we go into the factory. So let's get started. And welcome inside the factory. This is Mayfield Labs, and this is where they manufacture cosmetics for dozens of small uh, beauty brands all around the world. And they're owned by a company called Natural Looks, which is based in Jordan. And I think today we're even making some products for Natural Looks inside the factory. So all cosmetics are made of chemicals. And as you can imagine, when you're working in a big factory and you're making lots of cosmetics, you need a lot of chemicals. So I'm currently surrounded by big vats and drums of all sorts of things, many of which are natural, many of which are botanical. In fact, let's have a look. What have we got here in the storage area today, Lucy? So I believe there's some glycerin up here. Uh, we've got a surfactant in this one, various other oils and would, base ingredients. What would be stored in all these big drums down here? There's pearlizer, again, surfactants, different types of surfactants, various sorts of base ingredients. Amazing. So when all of the raw materials arrive in the factory, they all get put in this area, and this is where they'll be quality controlled first before they can actually be um, used in the manufacturing itself. And once they're cleared, we come into the main manufacturing and formulation area. So let's go and have a look and see what they're making today. So Mayfield can do two different things. They can either design your formulations for you or they can take the formulation that you've made and manufacture it for you. And if you want your formulation designed, this is the lab where the magic happens. So you can see they've got all the equipment set up. This is where the lab technicians test things out. And this is Stephen who works here. So what have you been designing in the lab recently? Um, so, at the moment we've been working on some external customer um, formulations, so we're just making like a small batch to basically prove that we can scale it up into yeah. a larger scale. Amazing! What sort of products have you been designing? Um, so, recently there's been a couple of conditioners, um, shampoos, but yeah, there's, there's, there's been all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds amazing. Well, let's have a look at some of this equipment because people watching won't have a clue what any of this is. Like, what's yeah. this? So this is a tabletop homogenizer um, used for um, combining oil phases to water phases. Um, so for things like conditioners. Um, so you basically get your big beaker, you put it under there. Is there an attachment that goes on it as well? And then it yeah, stirs so you, it all? Yeah, so you put the beaker on under there um, and you turn it on and it use the up and down to Oh, amazing. <laughs> And then, yeah, when you've got it to the, to the height you want, you can set the time for you know, three minutes and then just choose your speed and it will start um, homogenizing. Oh, fantastic. So this is where all the products are designed. There's some testing that goes on here as well to make sure that everything's stable and safe before it can be released to be made in the factory. Should we go and have a look and see how it's made? Right, so we're in the manufacturing area now. So imagine someone's come to Mayfield and they said, design my formulation for me. It gets checked, it gets finalized, it gets released, it's ready to go. Now it gets made in a larger batch before it can actually be packaged and sold. And this is the manufacturing area. And behind me, you can see all sorts of fascinating, huge equipment. And this is much bigger than you would find in a lab that an indie beauty brand might set up, for instance. And I know many of the people probably watching are indie beauty brands. But this is where you would get to if you were scaling up massively and wanted to make thousands and thousands of units. So this device behind me is a mixing vessel which can mix one metric tonne of product, which is quite incredible. Maybe we can have a look inside it in a minute as well. It's being lowered into the vessel. 
You can see the rotating blades as well, which will then stir the liquid inside the vessel. And it looks like it's being heated as well. That's There's possibly. steam coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm here with Zach, who's the production manager, and he's just been preparing this gigantic vessel for something that they're going to be making here on the factory floor today. So what's happening in there at the moment? Um, so the water phase is in there. Um, it's heating up. Yeah. Um, I've got the oil phase in the side pan there. So I'm just waiting for them to both get to temperature. So we're aiming to get uh, 75 degrees. Yeah. Just added a couple of powders, so they're dissolving in there now. Yeah. Um, here, you're more than welcome to have a look. It's up and mixing. When they're blended together, what are you actually making in there today? So it's, uh, it's called Pink Musk Hand and Body Lotion. And this is for natural looks yes. as well? Yeah. Should we go and have a look inside the vessel? So the water phase is in there at the minute. I've got it mixing quite slowly. Um, I've added a few powders, so I'm just waiting for them to dissolve now. So let's go have a look at one of the other mixing vessels that they have here in the factory, which can handle 300 litres, I believe. So slightly smaller, but still absolutely massive. <laughs> so what are we looking at here, Zach? What's this? So we've got the main mixing vessel here, the water vessel at the back, and then the oil vessel here. Yeah. Um, so what happens when we make emulsions, like lotions and stuff, um, we'd have the water phase in the main vessel um, and the oil phase in there. So it's under vacuum um, and then we connect the pipe to it. Yeah. Um, we open the valve slightly yeah. and that then sucks your oil phase into it. While that's going on, we have the homogenizer um, at the bottom. Oh, so it's combining. inside the actual yeah, vessel so it's, itself, I can blending. lift it up for you and show oh, you. Oh yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Let's go and have a look. So it's very similar to the other one, just on a just smaller, smaller scale. But yeah, still that's it. pretty enormous for yeah, anyone yeah. who's going to be watching this video. Exactly. <laughs> wow. So this one holds up to 300 litres. Imagine making 300 litres of lotion. <laughs> so every time you buy a lotion or a conditioner or a hand cream, and it's been made by a big brand, it typically comes from a factory like this, where it's mixed in a vessel like this, which is absolutely incredible. We often don't think about these things when we're buying cosmetics and using them at home, but they all start somewhere like this. So before you manufacture cosmetics, it's good practice to get all of your ingredients ready. And that's also what they do here at Mayfield, because what you can see here is this area, all of the ingredients are pre-weighed. So what are we looking at here, Lucy? So these are all the pre-weighed ingredients for a deodorant that will be made later on today. Everything is weighed into the buckets the day before manufacture, so you know, everything's ready. That seems really sensible because otherwise you might run out of things, I suppose. You might, and it's better to know you're going to run out the day before manufacture, yes. not when you're halfway through the making the product. <laughs> and what are all these tools and... So these are prop mixers. A couple of these have just been replaced, so these have been put to one side for now. Okay. And this blue machine is a large homogenizer. Okay. So if we're making lotions or creams in the barrels, that's what the homogenizer's for. And for many of the formulators in our community, they'll be used to very small homogenizers, so seeing something at this scale will be quite significantly bigger. And here behind us, actually, we can also see what's being made here today. So this is a body spray, so this is being made with an air stirrer. Okay. You can't use electric on alcohol-based products. Yeah. So that, again, that's the natural look, so that's a body spray. Incredible. So here you can see a giant vat of body spray being made with an air stirrer inside it. And maybe you want to come and have a quick look inside the barrel. That's very cool to see. <laughs> so once your products are made and everything's been manufactured, presumably you end up with a really big vat of product. Indeed. What happens at that point? So then they're all stored through here. Let's go and have a look at the next part of the factory. So all the products are made, they're manufactured, they come into the storage area. What happens at this point, Lucy? Because they're not ready to be packaged yet, are they're they? They're not ready yet, no. So they come into this area after the products have been pH tested, viscosity tested, to make sure that they are in spec. Um, samples are given to our chemist in her office so that she can check that the colour matches the previous batch that was made, yeah. that they smell the way that they should do and look generally the way they should do. And then they sit here until micro-testing is complete. That's an external process, takes about three working days for that to come through and they wait here until those results have come through and that the product is clean. Amazing. And this is so important because obviously the cosmetics we use need to be safe, they need to be stable and they need to be sellable as well because we don't want to make a giant batch of something that then has to be rejected or worse. So this is where you can see all of the products are being stored at the moment, ready for hopeful clearance and then we'll move to packaging and labelling. Should we go and have a look there? Okay. 
Right, I'm joined here by Kate, who's the production manager in the filling side of the factory. So obviously we've made it all the way through storage. We've got the products ready to go. They've come through all the checks and balances and now they're going to be filled. Let's go and have a look inside. What, what's happening here today, Kate? So when we receive the product, it comes in barrels. Yeah. Um, all the checks are done and signed off at the beginning of the job. Yeah. It gets pumped into a hopper and then with the help of gravity in the machine yeah filled into its bottle oh amazing and what, what are you actually filling today so what is this liquid that we can see being put in the bottle so this is our hand and body lotion so it's a hundred mil fill yeah so it's our smaller size um and then a lotion pump is being attached to it yeah it's going through our automatic capping machine oh wow and then on to be labeled so this is our main line that yeah takes everything from start to finish. So how many, I mean, that's a big box of bottles. How many have you got in there? <laughs> so it's 570 in there. Okay. This order's for just over a thousand. Okay. So this all, this job's got two orders. Yeah. A stock order and then a order for a customer. Yeah. So it's, yeah, just over a thousand in total. And how long will that take to fill? Because I'm sure people watching will be thinking a thousand bottles, that must take a really long time. So you're talking about an hour and a half, two hours? No time at all. Really. It's, yeah, it doesn't take very long at all. So there's a little gate here that spaces the bottles evenly yeah. so that they can run through the labelling head. So we need that little gap between them so that yeah. they've got time to label, be released before the next one arrives. So it goes straight into the labelling jaws, gets clamped against the roller, spun and yeah. label applied, and then gets chucked out the other end and then goes past the coding head. And that puts our batch code on, telling us all our traceability and when the product expires. So every single cosmetic has to have a batch code on it as well, just in case yeah. something goes wrong, so you can always trace it back to that batch that you made. Amazing. It's so satisfying to watch. I bet everyone here just comes and has a look at the cap um, tightening machine every single day as well. Yeah, I love the capping machine. It's so yeah. great to watch. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. So one other thing that Kate does here on the factory floor is quality control. So we've got a small area here. What goes on here then? So every half an hour, depending on what products are running, we check a series of things. So for a lotion, like we're running in the alcohol room, you will check the torque, which is how tight the cap is on the bottle. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that it's on the tight enough to keep the product in, yep. but not too tight that it's then going to release after. Um, we check the weights, so we make sure that every single bottle has the right amount of yep. product in yep. within a tolerance. Mm -hmm. And that's checked every 30 minutes. Okay. And what happens if something doesn't meet your requirements? So if something doesn't meet what we need it to be, we have to stop it straight away. Yeah. So stop the whole line, find out what the problem is, where it went wrong. Yeah. And then we continue the line when we've corrected the mistake. Amazing. And this is why it's so important that your cosmetics are safe. But luckily there are checks going on all the time to make sure that the products you buy in the shops are safe for use. So we're now in the finished packaging area because the products have obviously been manufactured, they've been packaged, they've been labelled, now they're ready to go. And here's a lovely, I believe, a beautiful purple shower gel, again made by Natural Looks. Um, and it's all going into this packaging machine. So what's actually happening here at the moment? So at the moment we're wrapping 100ml shower gels into um, blocks of six for them to go on to be packed into their boxes. For natural looks. Amazing. So you just put in six at a time and then this machine sort of just puts plastic around it and almost sort of shrink wraps it? Yeah. So we put our six in, we've got a frame here that holds them in. Yep. We send them into the wrap. A wow. heat sealer comes down <laughs> and cuts the plastic. We then send it through a heated tunnel which we can control the speed of and the oh, temperature of. Okay. And then it will send our nice, neatly packaged product out the other end. So we're going to have a look at the other end and receive them there. Mm -hmm. 
So the products have been wrapped, they're ready to go, they're ready to be shipped to the final client. And well, what's happening over here at the moment, Lucy? So we're creating separated hazardous and non-hazardous pallets of products. They have to be separated to go out on by seat, well, any kind of freight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are all now being boxed up, palletized, ready to go out to Jordan in a couple of weeks' time. Amazing. So where do you store all the finished products then once in it's all this done? area here? Oh, so wow. all of these pallets, almost all of these pallets are wrapped and strapped and ready to be loaded onto a container to go out to the Middle East. Incredible. There's some UK customers work as well now, so these will be waiting for micro test results to come yeah. in and then the shipping will be arranged. Incredible. So you've also got a dispatch area, haven't you? Yeah, so we're going to around here. So this is the dispatch area where all of the products, I suppose, are getting ready to ship out then? Yeah, so there's a bit of storage area here. We take goods in through this area, but also goods out. So this pallet here is one of the pallets that's wrapped and ready to go out to the Middle East. So they'll all gradually be brought around and loaded straight out the roller door onto a, usually a refrigerated container to go out to the Middle East. Amazing. So that's been a bit of a, a potted overview of what happens inside the factory when your cosmetics are made. So as you can see, it's a big undertaking, but it means that the products that you buy in the shops are safe, they're stable and they're sellable. And the people here work really hard every day to make sure that you buy the finest cosmetics. <laughs>